Hi, my name is Jim Moyle, and uh, welcome to episode six of the uh, PowerShell and WPF series. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, rooted events as we uh, promised in the last episode. So, we start as usual in Visual Studio, and uh, this time we've got a, a, a two page wizard instead of the, uh, the normal three. And <coughs> what we've got set up here as we can see in the XAML is a, a border and then within that border is a stack panel and within that stack panel is four buttons. Uh, there's no particular reason for the border and stack panel apart from the fact I wanted to have a, a hierarchy inside the uh, XAML to explore rooted events with us and so we've got four buttons inside. Um, other than that absolutely nothing uh, special about this particular window. So let's jump straight in. So <coughs> we've got our original function to look at the XAML and produce uh, our application and we've got an event for the first button and <coughs> we're going to um, uh, use write host and we're going to write host one uh, on that button uh, button one click. Uh, I'm using the ISC rather than uh, VS Code and I do swap between editors all the time. Um, one of the reasons is uh, for switching back to the ISC is it's very good at having breakpoints in uh, events. Um, it does however when you're working with WPF occasionally crash so the ISC may crash while we're doing this but uh, that's no problem we'll just restart it. So Let's, ah, and look at that, we've crashed immediately. So let's hope it won't happen too many times while we're, uh, while we're doing this. So as usual, all the code is, will be on, uh, on GitHub. And where are we? Let's just uh, zoom back in slightly. So this is just a normal event. We'll have a look at the application and we can see that if I hit one, we can see in the uh, in the console there that um, effectively this right host is working as an event. So let's put a breakpoint on the right host bit and restart the application. Now we'll hit one and now we're into this breakpoint. Now we've seen it before, but I just want to show you again. We have got inside uh, inside this event, we've got two variables, automatic variables. We've got dollar this, and we've got dollar underscore. It's more dollar underscore that we're going to be working with today. And <coughs> mostly events, mostly because what we can see is that we've got a rooted event. We've got whether it's handled the source and the original source and if we do dollar underscore dot original source we can see the same as this which is the the uh, effectively the button that we're using all right so let's just pass through that and we'll look at the button we'll, we'll hit cancel so what we've got is um, <coughs> these four buttons and say I want all four of them to when they're clicked to write the contents of the button one two three four and do write host to that but I don't want to write four sets of code so let's go back to our ISC and we can see what we can do is now we can see we're going to use that built-in variable and we can take the original source and, and content which should be the, the label on the uh, on the uh, application so let's do that does that still work yep that still works so now it says local and then the uh, and then the name of the uh, um, uh, the content of the button uh, the reason it's the local just to, just to show you where it's coming from so if I want to look at a way to write my code once and have it execute exactly the same for all four buttons 
So let's have a look at the Windows Event Manager static method to get rooted events. And we're going to look at the routing strategy named Bubble. Now, Bubble is a type of rooted event where uh, if the event is not handled, and we saw the handle in the uh, in the local uh, in the automatic variable dollar underscore, if it's not handled inside it, then it will bubble up to layers up the XAML tree. And we can see here that there is a lot of different types of events that we can bubble up. And we can see, we can see click is, uh, is in there. So that means we can bubble this up the, uh, the tree. Um, <coughs> not all rooted events are bubble events. But we'll see, uh, see that uh, in a bit more detail in a little bit. So let's just take the, uh, the block quotes off from here. And what have we got here? So we're creating an object of type rooted event handler. And that is a script block. And this script block is write host, rooted, and then the original source.content. Now, that handler we then want to assign to a um, assign to a, an item in the XAML and then we want to say what's the source which is this button click and on button click we want to handle it with this script block so now if I uh, run the uh, application and let's do two and we can see now that we've executed the rooted event for two, three, and four. Excellent. So I haven't written any specific code for the two, three, and four buttons. I've just done a handler for the, uh, the, the border, which is above the stack panel. So we're actually going two levels up into uh, the XAML tree and handling the, the button click event there. So what happens if I press one? Now, round. now remember, we've got a uh, event handler that is handling all button clicks in the XAML that are children of the stack panel, which is a child of the border, and we're also handling this event locally. So, <coughs> if we see what happens when I hit one, ah, now that's interesting, isn't it? Because now we've got local and a rooted event and this is because even though we've uh, triggered an event on the original button the handled property is still set to false so it's still bubbling up the tree and this happens for all events now obviously we don't particularly want to handle the same event in this occasion, the same event in two different ways. So let's just cancel out of this application. And we'll go back to the code. And this time, we're going to set handled as true. So this will stop this event bubbling up the XAML tree to be uh, um, to be used by uh, the, uh, the the event handler I've set on the border. So now if I hit one, we just get the local because we're handling it there. And then two, three, and four, we're getting the rooted one. So that's a way that if you want to do a general event for um, lots and lots of the different types of, uh, of uh, events in your application, but you want to accept a single event of that time type, then you can still write a specific event and then put handled equals true to um, stop the bubble up. There are arguments that you should always put handled equals true in your events to prevent any extra processing happening. And but I've never found the need to do that in terms of performance of my application. You may, uh, your mileage may in fact vary. All right. So. Let's have a look at something else. Now, if we take a look at the second page, now from episode five, what we did is we created some uh, IP address boxes that had a function to handle all the weird 
uh, different UI stuff that uh, to try and replicate the, uh, the, the Microsoft IPRE address boxes. And I said, what would happen if we had many of these? So we've just got IP address subnet and gateway here. And let's uncomment the stuff that we need to do this. So we've got the function that we wrote previously, and we can see that up here. And if you want to know how to do that, uh, episode five, the previous episode is your uh, is the video to watch. And we're passing through as a parameter the um, the local dollar underscore automatic variable. And this time we're doing a uh, text changed, and this is the script and the text box text changed event. And we're handling that at the page level. So we can see here we've got the page at the top. Page there at the top. We could have handled it at the grid level, that would have been fine as well. But uh, we're, we're doing it at the, at the top level for this script. All right, so let's run that and go to the next page and let's see if this works. So if we get more than 255, the border should go red, which it does. And also if we get three uh, numbers, we should skip to the next text box. And <coughs> if we hit backspace, we should go back, which doesn't happen. Now in the last episode I said that uh, I kept th this function or this behavior outside of the function because I wanted to handle it differently. And there's a good reason for that because as I said not all rooted events are bubble events. What you also have is tunnel events. And we can see that they all start with preview here. So it means that that is in interrupting the uh, the event before it gets down to the uh, to the individual uh, the source of the event. So we can't bubble these because these are tunnel events. Now what we wanted to do was uh, interrupt the um, preview key down. So we wanted to interrupt the preview if the key is back and this character index is zero we're going to move focus to the previous box there may be a better way of doing this if you do know a better way then uh, let me know in the uh, in the comments but what we're going to do is we're going to now remember that WPF is a variable that contains all of the uh, XAML uh, the named XAML items so we're going to look through them all. We're going to say where the event is a text box and is not uh, and is not read only because remember the dots are also text boxes, but they are read only. But I don't want to do anything with them. And the name not like one. So I don't want to in the first octet backspace out and go to the previous one. This we should be careful of because. What we're doing is we're looking for all the text boxes. Um, the if I wasn't going to go on the name, I could say if it also its parent is a stack panel would be a good way of doing this. But I'm using the name to uh, to filter out the stuff that I, that that I don't uh, that I don't want. And then we're just going to select object property name. We need to set up the navigation as we did in the uh, previous episode. So I'm not going to go too far into that. But then we're going to do a for each. So for each box in text boxes, which is the list we got previously, we're going to create the event. Now I could write all these events out individually, but then just for these uh, three IP address boxes, I would have nine different um, nine different events to write out. And anytime you're repeating code, you probably can find uh, a more efficient way to do it. So I'm just doing a for each and setting up the events uh, using that for each. So let's have a look at that. And we'll see if this works for all our, um, all our IP address boxes. And now if we hit backspace, 
now we jump backwards because we're hitting that preview key down event checking if it's backspace and then handling that and putting it into the uh, into the previous text box and this will now work for everything and we said not input not in the first text box so it's not jumping backwards to uh, to the uh, next the previous tab index uh, text box so <coughs> bubble and tunnel events bubble events if you want to handle stuff in uh, much higher up in the uh, in the uh, uh, XAML tree and you can also within your function say make sure that you know either you accept accept the stuff you don't want to bubble up or you can put handled equals true inside the event to make sure that it, it doesn't uh, bubble up as well as being handled uh, locally all right so rooted events can be very useful um, <coughs> particularly when you're trying to do some interesting stuff and write less code so thank you for listening um, have a good uh, have a good fun have good some good fun with your WPF and PowerShell projects thanks for you very much